What's up, peers, and welcome to Bitcoin to the Max here on the World Crypto Network. And we've already now discussed a bunch about uh, payment channels and how they work, how you can open them, how you can update them, how you can close them. Uh, and well, payment channels are awesome, right? If you, for example, go regularly to a bar or to a restaurant, you can open a payment channel once and then pay to the same restaurant a bunch of times. But well, I mean, this works if you go to the same place over and over again, but this also then would be a drawback, right? Because if you go to a new restaurant only once, you would have to open a new payment channel every time, which doesn't make too much sense. And the key about the Lightning Network is actually not the payment channels, which are quite a old technology, but rather the routing between these payment channels. So the Lightning Network actually is a network of a bunch of Lightning Network nodes that each have some channels with each other, Alice with Bob, Bob with Charlie, Charlie with Bob, uh, uh, Charlie with David, and David with Ali, and so on. And then they communicate with each other in such a way that they can route payments. So for example, when Alice wants to send funds to, um, to Ali or to David, then she will have... And she does not have a direct route to David, uh, but she has a route from Alice to Bob. And Bob has a payment channel from Bob to Charlie. And Charlie has a payment channel up to David. Then Alice can, with some cryptographical magic, route a payment um, through Bob, Charlie, up to David in such a way that the money cannot be lost or stolen in the middle of this route. Well, how does this work? Um, th this now can get a bit technical and a bit complex, uh, but you know we, we can get through this. And that basically, Alice is saying that she will want to send uh, three Bitcoin uh, to, um, to David. And then she goes to Bob and tells him uh, in a uh, encrypted fashion that he will receive 3.2 Bitcoin um, if he gives Alice a little secret. Uh, and Bob does not know yet that secret, and neither does Alice, actually. And Bob can only claim these 3.2 Bitcoin from Alice uh, when he reveals this little secret, the so-called pre-image, the hash pre-image. And then Bob can turn around to Charlie and do pretty much the same thing. He can commit uh, to say that Charlie or that Bob will pay Charlie 3.1 Bitcoin uh, if, again, he will uh, give him the same pre-image. Uh, so the same secret that Alice wants, Bob is going to buy, quote unquote, from Charlie. And then uh, we have a, the, the third hop here in this sense would be that Charlie is committing to David that he will transmit him three Bitcoin if he releases this hash pre-image, this little secret that so far only David knows. And with this magic, we've set up a kind of a, a chain reaction so that when David releases the hash pre-image, the little secret, and he sells the secret to Charlie, uh, then Charlie will transmit the three Bitcoin to David. And though Charlie now needs to claim the 3.1 Bitcoin from Bob, because otherwise he would have to pay out of his own pocket. But he has the pre-image, and so he can sell the pre-image to Bob, who has committed to paying him 3.1 Bitcoin uh, if uh, Charlie gives him the pre-image. But here again, Bob now uh, has paid 3.1 Bitcoin, but he has not received anything. But again, Alice has committed to Bob that she will pay Bob 3.2 Bitcoin when he gives her this hash pre-image. And then when Bob gives this little secret to Alice, she will push back or she will push the money to Bob and 3.2 Bitcoin. So the cool thing is that Alice can send money to David over Bob and Charlie uh, in such a way that that the, the incentives are aligned, that Charlie cannot stop the payment, right? Uh, David is the first to get the money. 
Uh, and this means that uh, David gets the money regardless if Charlie puts, uh, puts back the hash time lock contract here uh, to Bob and to Alice. Uh, but ultimately, of course, Charlie is very incentivized to do so. Otherwise, he's going to pay out of his own pocket, which is, of course, not really optimal. And then further, the really cool thing is that all this communication is onion routed. So it is encrypted in such a way that, for example, Charlie knows that the payment is coming from Bob, but he does not know if Bob is the very first person to initiate this payment. So Charlie does not know if Bob is the real sender or if there is Alice behind Bob, because that, that is onion encrypted. And further, Charlie does not know if David, to whom he's sending these funds, is going to be the last individual on the route or the receiver of this money. And because this is uh, Onion encrypted, it is really, really private, actually. Uh, even so private that David does not know who sent him the money. Because, again, that is Onion encrypted. He just knows that Charlie gives him some money when he, uh, uh, in exchange for this hash pre-image. Uh, and though the cool thing is, is that Alice can prove that she has started this entire payment uh, here with the hash pre-image. And this little secret here, the hash pre-image, is set up in the so-called hashed time-locked contract. And so there is also a little tiny uh, time delay between all these uh, channels of, in the case um, that one of them is closing the channel maliciously, uh, the all other parties would have enough time uh, to publish their, um, their, their defensive uh, transaction. Um, so the cool thing here is that we can route payments to other peers whom we do not have a direct payment channel in such a way that all these routes do not know who sent the money to whom. But for the service of doing this route and providing this liquidity, they are actually being compensated by a little fee. Uh, as we saw, Alice paid 3.2 Bitcoin and Bob paid Charlie 3.1 Bitcoin. So Bob himself here kept 0.1 Bitcoin. And same with Charlie, right? Because Charlie only transmitted to David 3 Bitcoin. And so Charlie himself also took the little fee of 0.1 Bitcoin. And that's, uh, that's really here the, the cool thing, that for the service of providing the liquidity in the Lightning Network, you can earn routing fees, which is actually quite nice. And again, the beautiful thing here is that it's atomic. So either the payment goes through or it does not go through. There is no state where the payment is half done uh, or where Charlie can steal the money and then neither Alice nor David has it. Uh, that is just not possible. And again, that's really, really cool technology. Uh, so this is a rather complex subject. And I, I highly encourage you to go to Rene Picard's uh, incredible YouTube video about onion routing and the hash time lock contracts here in Lightning Network. And he has a very nice and visual explanation uh, with a bunch more details as well. Uh, Pierce, if you want to know more about this, uh, Google it, go to the bolts, uh, read all of them, go to the white paper, of course, and ask the questions, right? Uh, so be active in the chat, uh, go on the slacks, on the telegrams, uh, and ask the questions, because it is very complex. Uh, and uh, you need to hear it a couple of times before you really understand. Well, Pierce, thank you very much here for joining me today on the World Crypto Network. If you like it, leave a like and share. And if you want to support me personally, go to teleco.in slash Max. And as a thank you, you get early access to all these shows. Well, Pierce, again, thank you very much and see you on the next show. Bye-bye.